I've heard a lot of buzz around the Fab Filter mixing pack, with many of my peers telling me that their Pro Q EQ plugin is the only EQ you'll ever need, and the same goes for the Pro L limiter. But my bad, I've never actually tried them. Well, the lovely Ralph from their team recently reached out to us after having seen our Mac Mini M1 videos and asked if we would be interested in trying them on the new Big Smurf operating system running through Rosetta 2 on the new M1 hardware. He also pointed out that they do not yet have a native version for the M1, but they have tested the Intel plugins on an M1 Mac Mini using Rosetta, and they seem to work fine, but would we be interested in giving them a go? Well, yes, for two reasons. Firstly, I'm very keen to try the plugins myself and see what all the hype is about. And secondly, we have a red rubber dog in the studio who you may have spotted in a few videos, and he's also called Ralph. Hungry, Ralph? Hungry? Foodies? Foodie time. So we'll hand over to James for the technical bit while I'm feeding Ralph. Ooh, yummy, look, yummy, 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 <laughs> yummy. <laughs> First off, full disclosure, Fab Filter have very kindly sent us a license for their mixing bundle for the purposes of this video, but we are not sponsored by them in any way. And we are free to give our own opinion, which as regular viewers would know by now, we always do. So let's dive straight into the mix. We've used all of the plugins that came with the mixing bundle, so I'll give a brief overview of those as we use them. Then we'll have a look at how well they're performing running through Rosetta 2 on Mac OS 11 Big Smurf. Over to Logic Pro and let's take a look at the drum kit to start with. We start with Pro G, Fub Filter's gate and expander plugin, simply to take some of the snare spill out of the mics and give us a clean bass drum sound to work with. Next, we move to Pro Q. Interestingly, I almost always mix with compression before EQ. However, I found in this case that Pro Q sounded best when it came before the compressor. Pro C is next, and I've just added some gentle compression to smooth any outlying peaks in the bass drum sound. Nothing too severe here. Moving on to the snare, it's much the same except for the addition of Pro R, Fab Filters Reverb plugin, with a small half second space setting, which sounds absolutely great for giving the drums some life, and Saturn, a great sounding saturation plugin, just giving some analog tape warmth at the end of the chain. It's much the same for the Aston and Octava mics Chris used, just with a slight smattering of compression and some sweet top end added with the Pro-Q, followed by some very subtle saturation from Saturn once again. Moving on to the bass, this is Andrew Blowers, a session guy we regularly use in our studio, and mixing his bass usually involves simply just pushing the fader up. But we've added some subtle compression and some dynamic EQ just on the high mids, showcasing Pro-Q's ability to enable selective dynamics. Sticking with the bass for a moment, Andrew gave us a single, tasteful slaps note towards the end of the song, so I've automated the dynamic EQ to turn off and then back on just for that one note to bring the mids back in that and make it pop. For the guitar, just a bit of gentle compression, some EQ for low cut, a boost to bring out the tone of the mids and then a gentle shelf to bring down the harsher top end a little and then an instance of Pro R to add a little reverb. Usually I'd add reverb to a bus but we want to see how these plugins perform on a system they are not yet optimised for. For Michael's luscious roads, I had the mono track he recorded to work with and wanted to create a more stereo soundscape. So I duplicated the channel, panned the original largely untreated track, just some gentle EQ compression and a subtle chorus to the right, and then added more of a spacey vibe using Timeless on the duplicate track and panned that slightly left. That way, the Rhodes and guitar sit nicely together, with the guitar pan slightly left and the main, drier Rhodes sound slightly right, but we have some subtle stereo information also coming in from the Rhodes in the left channel under the guitar. Again, Andy's vocals usually require a push-up of the fader and you're done, but here I've added some compression, EQ and saturation, and another instance of pro art for a little reverb to give the vocals some space. Oh, I never get tired. Similarly, with the backing vocals, Andy is one of the finest singers we've ever had the chance to work with, so I really wanted to make his backing vocals as prominent as the lead, as they weave around the lead part beautifully. I never get tired. 
We have a drier vocal here with ambience provided by the spring reverb used on the session. Talking about you, talking about you, talking about you. Firstly, I'm really impressed with how these plugins sound, having never used them before. Here, we're always fans of using the same plugins across an entire mix with a few different flavors here and there. Add 350 Hz to a guitar and cut a bit from the drums with the same EQ and it all just seems to glue together a bit better, just as it would on an analog console. You have many of the same EQ on each channel. They are also incredibly intuitive to use. I didn't have to refer to the manual once and I could quickly get the sounds I was after without much trouble. In terms of performance, bearing in mind that these are non-native plugins not yet optimized for Big Smurf or the M1 and we're running them on an entry-level Mac with only 8 gigabytes of RAM, flawless. They're a joy to use, there's no latency in the user interface whatsoever, no glitchy, stuttery graphics and audio performance has been exemplary with no artifacts, dropouts or any issues of any kind. So I'll hand over to Mark to give his opinion from a mastering perspective. Righty ho, so I've had a quick play around with the FabFilter plugins for half an hour and initial impressions, uh, performance aside, just sonically, I'm really, really impressed. The EQ's great, the compression's great, the saturation's all right. I'm not a huge fan of, of saturation style plugins when mastering, but it's it's good and it's I like the fact that you can choose between different tape settings, tube settings. We'll go into that in a minute. But my overall first impressions are that everyone's right, the hype is right, these are actually really good plugins and they're performing flawlessly on this Mac as well, which is really good. So let's have a quick little look at what I've done. Uh, first thing I normally always do is load up some meters at the end of the very end of the chain so as I can see what's going on and then just before the meter we have a limiter and I've loaded the Pro L2, which is the first time I've ever used this limiter and I'm very impressed. Now I could hear a difference between different oversampling options. So I've gone for 32 for two reasons. One is because it sounded great. And secondly, is because it's giving the Mac a bit of pressure. It's kind of, um, I mean, it even says on the plugin there, 32 times, very CPU intensive. And there was a noticeable difference in, in what's going on in the CPU meter, having that at 32 than having it at zero or, or, or 16 or eight or whatever. Uh, so that's that's why I've, why I've done that. It sounded better and it's you know putting the Mac under some pressure um, but still working really really well this is actually a great sounding limiter um, even if you push it higher than I would normally like to push a limiter it it sounds great so that's at the end of the chain uh, let's just go through some of the other stuff as well and show you what I've done so again this isn't a mastering tutorial at all by any means whatsoever i've loaded a lot more plugins than i'd ever typically use in a mastering session um, we're just trying to test out the fab filter plugins both in terms of performance and it's the first time i've used them so in terms of sound quality as well so let's have a little play through So you can see limiter's doing its thing nicely and we're hitting round about minus 15 LUFS, which is normally where I like to aim for. Uh, let's have a look at some of the other stuff. So got a tiny little bit of multiband compression. I thought there was slightly too much bass going on. So we've got a tiny little bit of multiband compression just in this region here. So just kind of the woolly, mushy kind of kind of low end there um just taking a tiny bit of that out around sort of centered on a sort of 100 hertz with a fairly wide cue in the low end that's that okay satin so this is the this is the saturation very 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 subtle um plugins doing saturation can work in very subtle, subtle ways. If you drive this too hard, it sounds horrible, as you'd expect from any saturation plugin, including our own one, which is free, by the way. Uh, but yeah, this is sounding pretty good. I've got it on the warm tape setting. Let's just bypass it and put it on again a few times so you can hear what it's doing. Oh, 
so very subtle it's just kind of it's kind of doing what you'd want from tape transformers analog equipment it's giving a bit of mojo just a little bit of kind of warmth in the low end uh, quite impressed with that in subtle settings that's that's really great i've turned the bass up just a notch as well literally 0.6 of a db just to, to bring the kind of low end out a little bit from where I took it down with the with the multi-band compression. Okay, let's move on to the EQ. I'm just gonna stop this for a second and I have to agree with everyone I've spoken to who's used the FabFilter EQ have all said it's just the best sounding EQ ever, ever, ever. Um, and having used it only for half an hour this morning, uh it's not going anywhere I, i'm keeping <laughs> this eq and i'll probably the 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 limiter and a few other plugins we've only got on trial um i'm probably going to be buying the limiter as well because i'm really really impressed with the limiter but i'm really 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 impressed with this eq the fact that you can sometimes i want a dynamic eq sometimes i don't want a dynamic eq the fact that you can switch between bands on this so you can have one band dynamic one band not is fantastic and it sounds great it can be kind of characterful like an analog eq um or it can be super accurate and precise you've got you know you can switch it between kind of um linear phase or, or you, the, the the options in there are fantastic and it sounds brilliant so i've tweaked the low end again with this and let's just let's just solo the low end the only thing i don't like about it is that to solo the low end we have to hold the little headphone guy down and when we let it go it's unsoloed again so if that was as it was with the multi-band compressor if we just had a solo thing there and we can just take our hands off and leave it alone then i'd i'd, I'd prefer that in terms of um sort of user experience maybe there's a way you can change that i need to to look deeper into the plugin like i said this is just a kind of initial impressions kind of thing uh but this is great so let's have a little listen to what i've done to the low end so i felt it still needed a little bit more taking out at around 100 let's just solo it so you can hear there it's just slightly pulling down the mush if we move it down to a lower frequency and up to a higher frequency we can really determine whether we're affecting the kind of fundamental frequency of the kick drum or the bass guitar which is what you want a multi-band eq to do and it does it incredibly well just have a listen to this up a little bit higher so there you can hear we've really got the bass coming through and down there we can really get that kind of low end of the kick um, and kind of in between is where I wanted it I didn't want to take too much of the kick out or too much of the bass out there was just something in the middle that was bugging me And it's kind of there it's kind of 90 ish high 80s low 90s so great that's that that's done a fab job of doing that um, in the mids i've just taken out this little bit of 824 so around 1k ish And then I just felt that the smooth end, uh, the smooth end, the high end could do with a bit of bit of smoothing off. Again, I'm not a fan of smiley EQ curves at all. I, I tend to do the opposite to a lot of masters, if anything, obviously depending on the source material. Um, but you can hear the super kind of tinny top end we've got there. That's just bringing that down nicely and then we're back to the limiter and that's it so just to recap fabfilter asked us to test the performance of their non-native plug-in bundle on the new mac mini m1 and the verdict is well they work 
really, really well. Again, this is the base model with only eight gigabytes of RAM. So let's just out of interest, see how many compressors we can load up before things start to fall over. <laughs> One thousand one hundred and twenty-five instances of a non-native plugin, seventy-five channels, including the output, each running fifteen instances, and the GUI is snappy as anything. That's impressive. GUI, you said GUI. Performance in unsupported DAWs would of course be very different. So if you're thinking of upgrading to the new M1, then our advice as always would be to wait until your essential tools have versions that are approved for use on the M1 by the manufacturer. But I'd happily set to work today with the FabFilter bundle running on Logic on the new machines. And they sound great too, really great. What did you think? Yeah, um, I loved them. Uh, I thought they sounded great. They're dead easy to use and they were smooth as silk when I was using them. Me too. Yeah. So uh, a huge thank you to Ralph for contacting us for this video. We'll be interested to see how the native versions of these perform when they become available. And if you haven't tried FabFilters plugins, then head over to their website and make use of their 30 day trial. We think you'll be impressed. You got to buy the L2 plugin now. Yeah, I know this YouTube channel's costing us a fortune. <laughs> yep, but we love it. So that's good. Thanks for watching everyone. Please hit the subscribe button, ding the ding dong, hit the like button, do all that lovely stuff and you'll see us in the next video. Bye.